playing snooker back then was completely different to how it is now, even for a top player, because that season we only had six ranking events, which is kind of crazy when you when you look back and, and you think where, where we are now. I'd won the Grand Prix earlier that season. Back then, if you just won one ranking event in a season, you're absolutely you're over the moon. So going into the World Championships, I was, I was obviously very confident. Fergal was still a player very much sort of competing for the top 16. As he potted it, unbelievable if that goes in. <laughs> I did a big clearance to go 8-5 in front to win on the black. Then I sort of like saw out the rest of the match pretty comfortably. You are a former world champion. We are the current champions of the universe. <laughs> He's a legend. He's Dennis Taylor. Steve Davis. a safety shot, I don't think, in the first sort of like five or six frames. I went 6-0 down and he really put me on the back foot and I, I missed a couple of balls where, you know, he was applying pressure to me that I didn't really expect at all. And the crowd are loving it because, you know, he's the underdog. So going into the second session, I thought I'm going to try and apply a bit of pressure on him. But he came out and he just did the same. So going into that final session, if I could keep him on 11 for as long as possible, I know how pressure can turn around and I know that the crazy balls that he was going for will match, all of a sudden they don't go in. Oh, you're kidding. Martin Gould, 26. I'm not too sure now whether he can win the match, having seen that shot missed. From that point on, I felt that uh, if I can withstand that type of pressure, then I'll be able to withstand anything that gets thrown at me for the rest of the event. This for a little bit of Crucible history. I still think it was one of the greatest sort of moments in, in our sport over the last sort of like 15, 20 years for sure. The table wasn't playing particularly great, so it was quite hard to maintain good cue ball control and Steve's potting wasn't as good as, as what it was when he was at his best. And once I started pulling away, then it was quite tough for him. I had the pleasure of playing Hendry, Davis, Ronnie Higgins all at the World Championship. Something that at the start of my career I didn't really think I would achieve. I knew that I could exploit perhaps his temperament at the time, I think. Sometimes if things went wrong in matches, he could have a couple of bad frames. I think I had four centuries up to 10-6, something like that, so I played really, really well. Going into last session, I was 15-9 in front. Ali won the first three frames of the session. The crowd were really behind him because they wanted to see a close match. You just want to get it over and done with at that point, and so I had to refocus my mind and got the job done pretty comfortably in the end. Being the first semi-final was, was a pretty good advantage. You get to, once you do all the media and everything like that, 
you do it a lot earlier than the other semi-finalists. When I turned my mobile phone on after doing all of that, I got a voice message from my mum. Uh, She's like, we made the decision to fly over for the final because we had to make that call um, early on in your semi-final. We're just leaving Singapore now. And I'm like, my world's just completely turned upside down. That all of a sudden just put a ridiculous amount of pressure on me. I was a little bit all over the place, sort of like, I remember coming down and waving at her and I had to hold myself back to stop being in tears, really. I was, I was really emotional. I had so many things going on. Miller was heavily pregnant with Alexander. He was due any moment, so I didn't know what I was going to do, you know. And, and some players said, oh, no, you definitely got to be there for the birth of your first child. And I was thinking, like, no, nah, there's no way. I'm not stopping midway through the World Championship final to, to do that. I, you know, I'd never, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself. The first half of the match, was the standard was very, very good. The second half was when I think, you know, neither of us were willing to give up a frame. I think both of us were coming back to the table, even if we need three or four snookers, because you may be thinking any kind of frame that you can get in a World Championship Finals is like gold dust, you know, it could, it could, be, it could turn the match around. Every time I kept pulling away in the match, Graham kept coming back. I just had to keep believing in everything that I was doing. Thank you, frame 31. Neil Robertson to break. I knew going into the last session that if it was a little bit of a slog, then I think I'd come out on top physically because Graham had played that second semi final. He does look a bit tired, doesn't he? And he put everything into that. I was pretty comfortable. I knew that Graham didn't have anything left in the tank. Blew a kiss up to my mum in the crowd. Yeah! The feeling when you've already crossed the line in like the last frame to win the World Championship and you're just potting those victory balls, every, the crowd cheer every ball. Yeah! Yeah, it's an amazing feeling.